Hello, everybody. Today, I will be solving uh, problem 6.7 from Griffith's e &M book, 4th edition. And so for this problem, we're looking at a infinitely long uh, circular cylinder carrying a uniform magnetization M parallel to its uh, axes. Uh, we're going to find the magnetic field due to M inside and outside uh, the cylinder. And so I've drawn a configuration here, although uh, this configuration shows a uh, finite uh, cylinder. We're just using it to visualize our infinitely long uh, cylinder. Yeah. And so I've aligned the uh, M uh, vector with the uh, Z hat um, direction. And so for the cylinder, we note that uh, the normal vector points in the uh, S hat uh, or radial uh, direction uh, in cylindrical coordinates. And so one of the first things we can say about this problem is that since it, it carries a uniform magnetization M, we can say this M vector equals M Z hat uh, because the it is uh, uniform. And so, uh, Next, we want to find the bound currents to proceed with this problem. So uh, the first one is the volume uh, current of this configuration. And this is the curl of our m vector. And that'll be 0, because as we said earlier, this uh, m uh, magnetization is constant. So we expect no uh, curl from that. And so the surface current is uh, this uh, vector kb equals our m vector crossed with the uh, n hat direction. And so uh, plugging in for the m vector crossed with the s hat, as we said earlier, our normal vector points in the radial direction s hat. And so in cylindrical coordinates, z hat cross s hat is phi hat, or the circum circumferential uh direction. So we note here that our only uh, bound current is the surface current. So then that means that we can treat this configuration as a solenoid because the current points in the phi hat direction. And so uh, to better uh, visualize this, I've drawn a configuration here where the currents, uh, where we can think of this infinitely long cylinder as a solenoid with uh, closely wounded uh, coils, and here each uh, the coils point uh, its current points in the phi hat direction. And so, to proceed, we'll be using Ampere's law on this uh, solenoid configuration. And so, what I've drawn here is uh, two Amperian loops to uh, help solve this problem. Each uh, loop has a width of L, and then its uh, length is either S1 or S2. And uh, we've chosen the current point in the uh, direction that these arrows are pointing in that are drawn on loops uh, using the uh, right-hand rule. So to uh, proceed, we first need to think about uh, what components the magnetic field will have. And so uh, to first note that the magnetic field will only have a uh, component in the z hat direction. And so this comes from the fact that first, there will be no circumferential component or phi in the phi hat direction. So b phi will equal zero. And this is because the current is already pointing in the phi hat direction. And from the uh, uh, Biot-Savar law, our current crossed with the uh, differential uh, length that we choose in the phi hat direction will be parallel. And so that cross product will equal zero. And then uh, there will be no radial component. So there will be no B uh, S component. That'll be zero because uh, thinking about this problem, if we were to flip the direction of the current, this would imply flipping the B field. But we can achieve uh, flipping the current by uh, flipping the solenoid upside down, which will change the current direction. 
but that doesn't mean uh, logically that the B fields uh, component will uh, direction will change. So uh, that means that there can be no uh, radio component for our magnetic field. So the only component left is B, Z. And so we'll find that using Ampere's law. So to apply Ampere's law on the first loop, we first note that Ampere's law states uh, that it is the closed integral of the uh, magnetic field vector dotted with the uh, infinitely small uh, infinitesimal, infinitesimally small uh, length vector we're choosing uh, equals mu naught uh, times the current enclosed. And so uh, we have uh, four different uh, components for our loop here that we've chosen, this left, top, right, and bottom uh, components to our loop. So we can break our integral into four different integrals. And so here using the definition of uh, the dot product, we can say that our um, integrals will be the magnitude of the magnetic field times dl uh, cosine of the angle between them. And so we note that uh, DL, at least for the left and right sides, their angle between them will be 90 degrees because we know uh, B has to point in the Z hat direction and DL will be pointing in the Z hat direction. And so their angle will be uh, zero degrees. And that uh, for the top and bottom portions of these loops, the angle between them will be 90 degrees as from the configuration. And so cosine of 90 is zero. So these two integrals will be zero. And then uh, solving the remaining integrals, we have uh, using S1 for the distance to the outside field. We have uh, B inside times L because uh, the magnetic field for this portion will be different for the loop outside. So B inside times L plus B outside. Uh, and then to identify it, it'll be one because uh, our loops are different lengths, S1 and S2, equals mu naught and then I enclosed. And then just to uh, separate out uh, B outside, we uh, do some mathematical algebra here. And so we get this equation right over here for B outside one. And so the same steps follow for the second Empyrean loop in green, where S2 is the uh, length of that Empyrean loop. And so then now using S2 for distance of the second loop, B in, inside times L plus B outside 2, L equals mu naught uh, times the current enclosed. And B inside, it'll be the same um, for both equations, the magnetic field is inside the solenoid will be the same. And so uh, doing as we did before, we separate, uh, we want to isolate B outside. And so it equals to this equation, but if we note uh, immediately, this also equals B outside one. So from above right here. They, so they both equal to the same thing. So that must mean that B outside is a constant value. And so uh, further, some boundary conditions for this solenoid is are that as B outside, as S tends to infinity, we expect the magnetic field to equal zero. And so because B outside is a constant, it must be zero overall. So B outside equals zero. So that leaves us with the following equation, B inside times L equals mu naught uh, the current the, times the current enclosed minus B outside L. And this comes from uh, simply moving this to the other side. And so 
that will equal zero as we just noted above. And so our equation then becomes B inside the magnetic field inside the solenoid solenoid equals uh, mu naught times I enclosed over uh, the width of our Ampereian loop L. And so uh, to note, uh, KB is also, uh, can also be thought of as the uh, derivative of I uh, over the uh, length of the DL or DI over DL, um, which is the uh, length perpendicular to our current. And so uh, solving this I enclosed, uh, equals KB times DL, and that integral is just simply KB times L. And so we can substitute this back in here. So going back, B inside is mu naught times KB L over L, and so the uh, Ls cancel out. And then KB, as we noted from uh, all the way above, KB is... Uh, equal to uh, m in the phi hat direction. So we're taking its magnitude here. So it'll simply be mu naught m. And so overall for this problem, b inside equals mu naught uh, times m. And this is in the z hat direction as we've chosen for our problem, or it's pointing upwards. And then b outside is simply 0. And so I hope you enjoyed this solution and thank you so much for listening.